Hello everyone. In this video I'll be covering 13 quick tips to help you jumpstart your weekend in the Age of Empires 4 open beta. These tips are intended for someone who is familiar with RTS games and the Age of Empires franchise in general. I will begin with the economy and transition into military halfway through the video. The absolute first thing you should do before you even start your first match is go into the settings and turn off downscaling. The default settings will make your graphics blurry no matter what specs you have in your computer. Once you're in a match, the first thing you should do is not eat the berries. Your starting town center always has a berry patch nearby. Don't touch them. Berries are by far the slowest source of food in Age of Empires 4, and there will always be better options for you to use. Once you run out of sheep and safe hunts, even farms will be faster than berry picking. If you are exceptional with your micro, you can use a scout to kill a deer and carry the carcass with them. However, this requires researching the expensive professional scout's technology. Hunting is the fastest food in the game, so this can give you a significant resource boost while keeping your villagers safe if you have the extra time to micro your scouts without neglecting the other basic elements. Sheep are a solid and safe food source, gathering 14% faster than berries, but 9% slower than deer. However, the radius to gain control of sheep is lower than the vision radius of a scout, and sheep will not appear through the fog of war. If you queue up your scout to explore and stop paying attention, you will miss out on a significant amount of sheep. Just look at your scout occasionally and reroute as needed to pass closer to the unclaimed sheep within his vision. Speaking of sheep, they must be herded by a scout. If you order them to move on their own, they will move at nearly zero speed. Farms are an infinite source of food like in Age of Empires 3, but each farm will only accommodate a single villager and requires a drop-off location like in Age of Empires 2. To save time in placing farms, you can simply select a group of villagers and queue placement of farms by placing them directly on the mill. The game will automatically place each farm in a grid around the mill based on available space. This trick will also work with other buildings as well. Sorry for talking so much about food gathering, but it's the only real variable in the early game economy. Moving on to the military aspects, be prepared to be harassed early. Military units can be trained in age 1, and depending on the civilization that can even include cavalry. Any civilization is viable to exert significant pressure or even win the game in age 1 against an unprepared opponent. A new addition to the franchise, cavalry will now charge and deal bonus damage on their first hit of an engagement. This can be very powerful for hit and run tactics in the early game against melee units or villagers. Pikemen have a hidden passive ability that allows them to negate the cavalry charge bonus. To do so, all you need is for your pikemen to be standing still when they get hit by a cavalry charge. The easiest way to achieve this is to put your pikemen into the stand ground stance. Archers and crossbowmen do essentially zero damage against buildings. Be sure to include some non-ranged units if you want to take down any buildings at all. Another new addition, units can now fight on top of walls. Ranged units gain additional range and armor while on top of the wall. Most units cannot attack stone walls, so you'll need some form of siege units to get through. Aside from the conventionally trained siege units from a siege workshop, Age of Empires IV gives you a new type of option, battering rams and siege towers. These units require technology to unlock, but can then be created by any infantry in the field, rather than requiring production from a siege workshop. Battering rams and siege towers can both be garrisoned with units, and work generally as you would expect. Battering ram deals high melee damage, while the siege tower allows you to deposit units on top of an enemy wall. Units on top of the wall may then make their way down a gate to exit on the other side of the wall. As you may have gathered from the previous point, gates allow units up and down from walls. They also have a front and a back. From the back side, a gate is usable by any player, including your enemies, so make sure you place them the right way. Keep a close eye on any monk carrying a relic. With a relic equipped, a monk can convert an entire army with no chance of resistance. The moment you see the circle pop up, you only have a few seconds to either kill the monk or get your army to safety. Understanding how damage works is even more important than memorizing hard counters. The formula is as simple as possible. Attack damage minus armor equals the damage dealt, down to a minimum of one. Use this to guide both your build and upgrade priorities. For example, if you have a knight with five armor, and your opponent is spamming only longbows with six damage, the archers only deal one damage per hit, and it gives you literally zero benefit to further upgrade the armor on your knights. I hope you find these tips helpful. While far from comprehensive guide, this should give you a leg up as you enter the short open beta weekend. Thank you all for watching.